Hello there, my name is Ismas and welcome to another Blender training series and uh, this time we're going to be looking at texturing in Blender and uh, the way we're going to be do doing this is uh, look at how texturing is done in Substance Painter and try to replicate that in Blender 2.8. Uh, so this tutorial is brought to you or made possible by the P Patreons uh, that you see there. Uh, thank you a little for your support and uh, if you want to become a Patreon you can uh, also go to patreon.com forward slash top, one, top channel 101 and uh, yeah, help support the channel like that. So yeah, let's see what we're going to be doing now. So this is uh, the model we're going to be uh, texturing and you can see how I already texted this in Substance Painter and uh, if you want to see how I did that in Substance Painter, uh, the time lapse is already up. But uh, this story is, this training series is going to be about Blender and trying trying to get the same results uh, using Blender 2.8. Uh, so yeah, so this model is going to be available to the patrons if you want to download it and follow the, the training series uh, like that you can uh, uh, do that as well so yeah I have the same project here but uh, the same model here but uh, not texted and anything uh, so this is the the model we're going to text here and uh, try to get the same look uh, as we have here in Substance Painter uh, so uh, the model is already UV unwrapped so if I can show you how let me just add an image here texture image texture new uh, UV grid and uh, connect this to the base color. You can see it's well UV unwrapped. You're going to need to have your model UV unwrapped if you want to uh, do this type of procedure. And uh, yeah, so I'm using the same model in Substance Painter and uh, it's using the same uh, UVs uh, in Blender. And uh, actually, I also exported uh, the textures here and used them. Let me show you. I use them on the model. So this is how this is how the textures look in uh, Blender, and uh, they are, they were exported directly from Substance Painter. Uh, this is not what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to uh, try and replicate uh, the same uh, the same style of texturing here uh, that I, that I used in Substance Painter, Substance Painter in Blender here. So let's go in and get started. So uh, if you look at a Substance Painter, if you have the software, uh, you will notice that uh, if you go under uh, the layers and select any of the materials you have there. Uh, so say uh, this smart uh, mask and scroll down. Uh, where is this? Uh, make sure you have this selected. <coughs> You will notice that uh, they have a few image inputs that they use to derive other uh, different, uh, to derive how the textures are applied uh, on the model. And uh, the most important texture uh, image maps they use are the ambient occlusion and curvature. Uh, mostly curvature because it gives you uh, these kind of uh, eroded or yeah, eroded or I don't know how to call them, but uh, these kind of textures uh, that have been yeah, eroded and uh, yeah th that's all powered by the curvature map uh, the ambient occlusion are kind of adds in I don't I don't think I used it a lot here but uh, uh, where you see dark corners there uh, they can it's also used to drive uh, some of the textures uh, around uh, there uh, you also see that uh, there is the position uh, map and the uh, world uh, space normal I think the position map is used when you're trying to add things like ground dirt. Uh, so maybe this is left on the ground to, uh, for a long time and then dust uh, has started uh, developing around it. Uh, I don't know, dust maybe f uh, fun fungus or uh, this green uh, algae growing on, growing on it and you want it to, you don't want it to be everywhere, you just want it to grow uh, like a gradient growing up uh, that way and uh, maybe ground uh, that maybe when it's raining and uh, the dirt particles are uh, uh, start developing ar around the uh, the object so you will if it's if an object is left on the ground for a while uh, that uh, starts developing uh, from uh, like an uh, like a gradient so you see it uh, at the bottom uh, it's always a little bit more than uh, the top area because they are far away from the ground uh, than the bottom areas uh, this is all driven by the position um, map uh, that uh, uh, that Substance Painter has and uh, for all of these maps uh, Blender has 
an alternative or something similar to those uh, maps that you see that you see here, uh, like uh, the amino occlusion, uh, the position node, and uh, I think the world space normal is the same as the position node. Uh, the curvature map is non direct, but uh, you can use it, you can get it uh, using the uh, object pointness. So if we go to 3D view here and change our render engine to cycles, uh, you can add an input geometry and uh, you can use the pointness output of that node uh, to, to generate the curvature map. So, uh, but this only works in uh, cycles, it doesn't work in easy. So if you look closely, you start to see uh, the sharp edges as I drag uh, this. So whenever you're using the, uh, this pointness node, uh, it, it, heavily, it heavily relies on uh, the, uh, the geometry of uh, the mesh. So you need uh, some level of geometry. You need a, a lot of edges to create a high detailed uh, curvature map. So I have simplified turn off, turn down here to reduce on uh, the polygons that are uh, that are on on screen right now. So if I disable this, you can see we get uh, those sharp corners uh, that we can use to drive uh, the same texturing workflow that we have uh, in. Uh, in Substance Painter. So let's see how to do that. And uh, I'm going to export these out and also export out the ambient occlusion. Uh, but for the ambient occlusion, you don't really need to export, uh, you don't need to bake out uh, the ambient occlusion first. Uh, but uh, for the curvature, uh, we are going to have to bake that out because uh, we don't really, uh, I'm going to be working in EV, in Blender EV, and uh, Blender EV doesn't, uh, doesn't support uh, the curvature map, as you can see. I will have lost all that detail uh, there. So we need to bake this out so that we can bring it in as, uh, as an image map, uh, then we can use it uh, like that. So for the ambient occlusion, we don't necessarily need to bake it out because uh, if it supports it and uh, there is an ambient occlusion node, if you go under input, ambient occlusion, you can see how uh, we can use it directly like that uh, without baking it out, uh, but uh, if you wanted it to, if you want to bake it out, you just uh, add uh, texture, image texture. Uh, give it a high resolution, uh, resolution you want to use. I'm, for the case of this tutorial, I'm just going to use a 2K image map. I'll call this bake, and uh, uh, when you when you going when you're going to bake out uh, the curvature, uh, make sure you turn on uh, the 32 bit. Make it 32 bit so that uh, you don't have uh, that mosaic uh, pattern uh, when you uh, try to use the color RAM. Uh, I'll show you what I mean there, uh, but uh, uh, make sure you have the 32 bit enabled and uh, so that you have more detail in your texture map. Uh, it may take a little bit more time to bake, but uh, that's uh, if you want to get more details, uh, you will have to enable that. So uh, if you want to just bake the amid occlusion, this is all. This is all you need. Make sure you have the, the, the image texture you want to bake to selected, and then go to switch to uh, Cycles Render Engine, and then under Bake, uh, change this to Ambient Occlusion, and hit Bake. Make sure you have uh, the sample set high enough to have uh, a less noisy uh, bake, uh, but uh, I think 62 and 32 is enough if you're baking something about 22, uh, 2K. Uh, if you're baking a 2K image, uh, but uh, uh, I'm not going to bake out the amid occlusion. I'll just use it directly here, and uh, uh, that will be okay because I think it may take a little bit time of time to bake out uh, the amid occlusion. For the curvature, uh, what we're going to do is just connect this to the base color. Uh, since we don't have uh, a curvature map here uh, in the bake type, so we, we are just going to bake it as uh, the base color, which is baked under uh, the dive shoes of the object. So uh, now that we have that, make sure you don't bake direct light or indirect lighting. Uh, this, will, If you have this enabled, it will also bake uh, the shadows and ambient occlusion to the curvature map, which, you do, which we don't want. We just want to uh, bake uh, the point names or the curvature map of the object. Uh, then, so let's disable this and uh, select, uh, make sure you have set diffuse selected. Uh, so the margin is just uh, the distance you have 
uh, between these UV islands. Uh, so whenever you're baking, uh, Blender will bake out a few extra pixels outside uh, the, the UV islands uh, for padding uh, so that if you move your UVs or just a bit, there's always that uh, padding around uh, so that, uh, they, so that uh, you don't end up uh, having black areas in your, uh, your bakes. So I think a margin of around uh, three pixels is enough. So that's what I usually bake out and uh, I just select everything. Uh, let me make sure that I can see everything here. Uh, bake out everything. Uh, also make sure if you're baking cavity, uh, you are baking uh, your, uh, every edge uh, that you want to be, to be baked out, to come out in the image, in the bake, uh, has uh, some supporting edge loops uh, like you see there. Uh, if you don't have uh, those supporting uh, supporting uh, loops, uh, it will be very hard uh, to see those details in your bake. So let me change uh, my preview here to uh, this image here uh, that we're baking to. And uh, uh, for when you're baking the curvature, you don't need uh, this many uh, samples. So one sample is enough. Uh, since we are only baking the color, we're not baking shadows or anything that needs to be calculated with higher samples. So then after that, we can make sure you have the image selected that you want to bake onto, and then bake. It, should, it shouldn't take a long time uh, since we are only baking one sample, and you can see uh, what we have right now. And you can see, uh, again, if you don't have a supporting edge, edge loops like this, like this uh, you're not going to bake out, these details are not going to come out. Uh, let me first cancel this for you and uh, also make sure when you're baking out uh, don't have a high contrast don't have a lot of contrast in this uh, color ramp maybe something like this uh, because uh, we can control that after uh, the bake uh, so let's have it to something like that and uh, hit bake uh, but uh, what i wanted to show you is that uh, if you don't have uh, these supporting egg loops i use the bevel tool uh, to have those there so I think I corrupt, I apply the bevel tool there, but uh, yeah, so let me show you maybe on this one. Okay, this also has uh, that maybe. I'll show you how, uh, what I mean in the next tutorial. I don't want to have this too long. So let me bake this out and I'll explain what I mean in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching.